The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the Streamlined Data Center Migrations and Consolidation Webinar. This webinar will be hosted by Jim McGann and Greg Jorgensen. Jim is the Vice President of Marketing at Index Engines and has extensive experience with e-discovery and information management in the Fortune 2000 sector. He's a frequent writer and speaker on topics of big data, backup tape remediation, electronic discovery, and records management. Greg is a solutions architect at Index Engines with extensive experience in e-discovery solutions. Please type any questions for Jim or Greg in the question area on the right of your screen, and they will get to them at the end of the webinar. So let's begin. Jim? Thanks, Jen. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Today we're talking about uh, data center migration and consolidation. Um, a lot of our clients here at Index Engines are definitely involved in managing information, um, especially enterprise class information and managing this content in a way that, that is efficient and cost-effective is a challenge as the data grows. So what we're talking about, and we're going to do a, uh, a few slides and then Greg will go into a demonstration of the technology, um, is how we can help streamline that process. If you do have questions, uh, feel free to uh, type them in the chat window or the question window on the, the right side of your screen or left side of the screen. Um, or you can send an email to me directly. I'll put my email address up at the end as well um, if you do have questions then. Um, and everybody that's on here knows the, you know, the, the standard metric that all vendors talk about is the, the rapid growth of enterprise data. But if you've been in the industry for, for a while, you'll, you'll know that over the recent couple of years and what's being forecast for the, for the next couple of years is just tremendous explosion of enterprise data. And, we have clients that are that are just struggling, and it, you know some of the stats here. IDT is talking about 40 to 50 percent year-on-year growth. Um, you know they're expecting. You know they're starting to talk about things like zettabytes, which I didn't even know what a zettabyte was a couple of years ago, and now we do. Um, you know, and Gartner as well is talking about companies investing in big data and harnessing big data. So, you know, the growth of, of data is really significant, and uh, more important, the uh, the growth of uh, unstructured data. Is is even um, is even uh, you know a big issue. I mean, a lot of times people talk about the structured databases, but unstructured data is growing at phenomenal rates. Um, the challenges around migrations and consolidations, and, and most of you on here have probably been through one or two of these, um, is really you know the, the how to control cost and um, you know reduce IT, you know manage IT budget reduction. So a lot of organizations are really their goal is to is to really streamline their, their data center by reducing servers and capacity, uh, reducing infrastructure to really control costs is usually the number one driver. Um, a lot of benefits also are really the improved efficiency and optimization, um, you know, streamlining the management security of the data. So if you have, you know, data in the right place, it's not going to get outside your firewall and you know, have a data breach, you know, risk and compliance, same type thing. Um, technology refresh, so you know, not that companies do this every year, but every couple of years or five years or so on, they're going to want to do a refresh and upgrade to some of the latest and greatest technology. Um, one of the spaces that we deal with very frequently is the federal government, government and the Federal Data Center Consolidation Initiative is one example of, of an organization or, or a, uh, a vertical market that's really forcing the issue of data center um, migration and consolidation. And really that mandate, the government mandate is that by 2015, 40% of the data centers will be closed and consolidated. And the real effect there is, you know, obviously cost savings, you know, savings of $5 billion is significant, uh, but also security efficiency, business continuity, and disaster readiness capabilities. So a lot of, um, you know, if you think about, you know, backing up and protecting 40% less data centers, that's obviously a significant savings as well. So the $5 billion goes well beyond just the uh, data center cost. So the, the real bottlenecks that we see every day with our clients is, you know, dealing with the volumes of data. That's the number one, you know, issue. When you're doing a consolidation or migration, you're dealing with multi-terabyte, even petabyte um, scale servers um, to migrate that content. Um, the, a big issue in, in doing so there is, as you're doing migrations, we see a lot of metadata corruption. So a lot of these tools that are being used are changing things like the last access date. We're changing the owner to, you know, from John Doe, who's the actual owner of a document, to administrator. That kind of stuff drives, um, you know, data center managers and IT organizations crazy because you just lose all context of the data. 
So if, if your data is owned by, a large portion of it is owned by administrators, you really um, have very little clue as to um, how to how to manage it effectively. And if you have data that's on there that hasn't been you know accessed in years, and then suddenly you do a migration, then everything's been accessed you know this past week, you lose context as to the value of the data. So the real challenge that, that we see uh, pretty frequently is is the um, you know no you know no knowledge of the content. So no knowledge being that, that it's very difficult to classify and organize based on value and need. So you know a lot of the, the content that's been created is stuff that's just store the network for years and decades. So without any level of knowledge or metadata um, analysis, you really can't do any classification of the content. And by not doing, you know, without the knowledge, you can also implement a tiered strategy. You really don't know what has value, what people have accessed, and so on. And a lot of our customers are looking at implementing um, strategies to move data to the cloud, move data to archives, move data to lower cost storage platforms. Um, so whenever we, we engage with a customer that's looking at doing a migration or consolidation, the first thing that they always state is, I know most of the data that's on here is aged data and abandoned data, it's stuff that really has no value. I just can't separate that stuff from the stuff that does have value. And in doing a consolidation, if you know even 20% of the stuff has no business value, you know, you, you know migrating 20% less data is is definitely a key benefit because we all know that data movement is, is really where the expense comes in and the time comes in moving content from one location to another. So with, with our, we're going to talk about data profiling um, to support uh, migrations and consolidations. Uh, but what we, what we do with data profiling is we implement these classification policies. And these policies are, allow you to kind of bucket the data into different groups and to work with the business owners to determine the disposition of that content. Um, so abandoned data is one of the more common ones. So abandoned data is data owned by ex-employees that has no access in years. So if it's an employee that hasn't been with the company for three years and the data hasn't been accessed in three years, no one knows that exists. It's basically abandoned content. And I'll show you how data profiling will help you understand um, and classify data into that bucket. And when you're dealing with um, you know, different uh, departments like you know, HR or marketing or sales or research, you know, if you go to them and say, you know what, 30% of your data is abandoned, and this is the kind of data it is, do we need to migrate it or, um, you know, consolidate it onto this new platform? Those are the kind of conversations that data profiling allow you to have. Um, age data, um, everybody knows what that is, similar to abandoned data, but it's really for your current employee, current employee data that has, hasn't been accessed in more than three years. And we see three years as being a common, uh, common uh, time frame for uh, determining uh, age data. A redundant or duplicate content, a lot of that exists. You know, we see upwards of 30, 40 percent of data on, say, user shares is redundant. Um, you know, that comes from just people copying and sharing presentations, spreadsheets, documents, things like that. Um, a lot of the requests we see is, is, can you help me find personal data? Um, you know, search for iTunes directory, search for movie movie formats. You know, people using BitTorrent to download Star Wars movies and things like that. Can you help me find that stuff? Who are my top 50 or 100 or 200 culprits that are taking up a lot of multimedia um, space? Because that's the stuff that's really, um, you know, really uh, you know, being uh, managed by data hogs out there that, that really has no, no uh, business value on the network. Uh, Risk-based data, you know, sensitive content that could be PI, personally identifiable information, legal hold content. That stuff may not need to be on your, your servers or your networks may need to be in a, uh, you know, secure legal hold repository or an archive, so moving that out. Um, Archive-based data, similar stuff with long-term business value. Um, and then active data, the stuff that's on there that's really currently active. And you'd be surprised at the, at the, the percentage of what's on your networks and stuff that, that really is truly active data. It's, it's a significantly small percentage of, of the content that's there. So to find those policies, um, you can use the data profiling, reporting, and analytics tools to do that. There's a number of tools that are out there and you know, for, uh, for everyone on the call that's been in, in the space for a while, you're saying, well, there's tools that do this kind of analysis. Um, there's a number of tools that, that analyze networks and data and security logs, but they do different things. So it's important to understand how they differ. So I mean, the traditional IT tools that have been out there um, are, designed, are, are not designed to provide file level insight and analytics. And that's really what we're talking about today, is looking at it from a file point of view versus, um, for example, access log point of view. So there's tools like Veronis and other tools that are really going to 
look at your security logs. And if you need to say, hey, you know, who accessed this file uh, on this week, or when did John Doe access? What John file did John Doe access over the past month? You know, that's what really it's really more of a security audit um, than, than really a file level profiling. Um, it's not the detail level file metadata that you need. Um, there's block level and capacity planning tools used mostly by storage vendors to kind of do uh, capacity planning when you're in the middle of an upgrade or a migration to new uh, new environment. It's not going to give you insight into the file level data. It's really just block level analysis. Um, then there's file system metadata tools that do light, light metadata analysis. Not going to give you the depth of knowledge you need of, uh, of the files and the user content and structured files. What we're talking about today is full file metadata that will give you all the metadata including access, modified create times, owners, location, um, size, all sorts of stuff, as well as um, create an MD5 hash of the content or to determine if it is an exact duplicate of what exists out of there in the network. So it touches the file completely. And optionally, the tools we're talking about today that, that Greg's going to show you in a little bit um, can do full content profiling as well. So for a lot of our customers, just metadata only is fine. Um, if they want to do classification and organization, um, if you're doing things like um, you know, e-discovery or compliance uh, requests or things like that, um, it may be more interesting to do a um, Maybe more interesting to do a uh, what we say a uh, full content full content uh, analysis. Okay. Um, so really, what what we're aiming here for is a lot of reporting and analytics tools that allow you a file level knowledge in order that you could understand what you have and determine the disposition of the content. So some of the metadata that we'll be processing here includes things like user file data. Um, the more popular uh, metadata fields are really dates, specifically last access date. So not that it's going to determine it, does it have value or not, but it'll tell you that people are using this stuff. Um, size is critical to do some planning and capacity planning, see how much you can save if this is removed from the network or migrated to cloud, for example. Um, the path name, who owns it. The signature that says it's being used for deduplication purposes. And even if you do a metadata only profile, it still calculates the signature. Um, you can also profile email, you know, dates, sent, received dates, owners, signatures, things like that. As I mentioned, optionally, you can do full text. You can look for things like social security number, credit card numbers for security audits. Um, you know, a lot of the organizations we work with, you know, say, for example, customer service um, environments, are they saving credit reports and sensitive content? Um, on the network that needs to be encrypted. E easy enough analysis to do. Um, we can also support backup, uh, profiling of backup data. Um, a little bit of a different topic. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then location, you know, servers, tapes, desktops, whatever it may be. So the idea here is really to turn, uh, you know, to look at better data versus big data. We're just talking about big data these days. But if you look at big data, you know, how much of that content has value? Um, so the idea is to use data profiling um, using the reports and analysis to be able to classify data into groups by department and just figuring out what has business value, what has no business value, what's redundant, what's risk-based. And you can start looking at these categories and determine the appropriate disposition of this content with the business units. Some of the disposition maybe it can be purged. You know, it has no business value and no legal or compliance requirements. Um, it could be purged from the network and the business units and your legal department could give you the thumbs up on that to clean that data out. It's all a defensible process that's tracked and managed. So managing big data more intelligently is definitely a trend we're seeing within the data center. Uh, one of the strategies that we've seen is like a lot of you may be asking, well, how do we work with the groups and incentive the groups to do this and to change their, you know, their data hoarding strategies? Um, chargebacks is one we've seen. You can use chargebacks to stimulate and motivate cleanup. You know, whereas if you've got, say, a 100 terabyte server shared among different departments, you can go to, say, your HR department and say, hey, you know, you're using 40% or 40 terabytes of this server. I'm going to start charging you for this to recoup my IT expenses. And by the way, here's a profile of what's on there. You know, 60% of it hasn't been touched in more than five years. Can we talk to you about that and help you clean that content up so we can reduce your chargeback expense? Um, and doing that in conjunction with the legal department is, is definitely has a lot of advantages because they'll, they'll bless that process knowing that you know, data that has no longer has any value. It's just not 
laying around the networks that could be um, used against the organization or escape the firewall for data breaches and things like that. So purging what's no longer is required. We're seeing that as a trend um, and turning bigger data into better data. So the solution here we're talking about is our uh, Octane platform from Index Engines. It's our data profiling and disposition engine. It's very high-speed indexing. We're indexing now with our latest um, server platform. It's an appliance here in this case at 1.4 terabytes per hour using a single node. So it's very high-speed indexing technology. It's really designed for enterprise class environments. We're working with some of the largest financial firms and government agencies in the world um, to support their data profiling needs. Provides access to all data sources. So clearly, you know, here we're talking about online data, networks, LAN, user shares, desktops, and so on. Um, also can access legacy data on backup tapes, for example, one of the unique aspects of that. Not the key topic of today, but data profiling um, we're talking about can also support your legacy environment as well as the DB. That's very cost effective. A single engine, a single um, 2 use server can support up to a petabyte of metadata level indexing. So very scalable, very efficient. Um, the specs is a 2U Linux-based server. It's got 15 terabytes of storage on the uh, platform itself, um, 256 gigabytes of memory, a number of different connectivity options that you can connect to networks and, and all sorts of environments. Um, again, high-speed indexing. Um, an important point here is that it can support NFS or SIS crawling through the network or can support NDMP processing. So NDMP is, is very valuable because it's going to provide high-speed processing. You could, um, the, the appliance itself could act as an NDMP controller and issue a command to do um, full or incremental um, indexing of these NDMP-enabled servers. So um, another advantage in terms of speed and performance and, and network uh, throughput. Uh, we also have a VMware version available if you're not looking for a server deployment. Um, VMware, obviously, the benefits there are, are rapid deployment and um, just ease of, ease of getting it up and running. Um, this is a very important slide. So the ability to support integration with Active Directory, this is a very unique feature of, of the um, Catalyst environment. So integrating with Active Directory allows you to take advantage of user um, and group information. So for example, in your Active Directory environment, as an employee migrates from a current employee to an ex-employee, say they leave the company or they're let go, they get moved into an inactive group. So you can do a profile and say, show me active users, so the current employees versus inactive users. So that'll show you the abandoned data, as I mentioned earlier. So that's an easy way, you know, a point and click way to look at that content and determine how much of this stuff is on there is all by people that don't even exist in the company. And we have many organizations that install this, this software and the first chart they look at is the owners, and they find that quickly a large percentage of the content there is, is owned by people that are no longer with the organization. You can also roll it up to departmental groups, you know, such as HR, research and development, manufacturing, and so on, to look at it that way and look at who owns data, what type of data it is, the age of the data, um, capacity, and so on. Um, using that, you can do that. You can do a report summarized by groups and support chargebacks by department. Um, we also index the ACLs, um, so you can do security audits, so you can look at data and determine who has read, write, or browse access to this content. So the Active Directory integration is very key to do, um, to classify data by the different groups as well as to do security audits. Uh, performance and format. So I mean, a lot of organizations will look at this and say, you know what, I, I want to control my throughput and bandwidth on the network, so this is out there crawling through the network. I want to make sure that it's not impacting my um, user performance. There's quite a few tools in here that can uh, throttle bandwidth. Um, we do incremental updating of the index. You can set schedules. So there's a lot of tuning capability in the interface to allow you to control how much um, capacity and how much um, throughput is being used. In terms of format supported, we focus mostly on the unstructured user data. Also supports email exchange and notes, uh, so it allow you to to do uh, profiling on any type of you know, loose files and user content. And again, as I mentioned, you can either do a light metadata-only index or a full text um, index as well. It depends on really your needs. So in terms of un unstructured data profiling, um, what we're looking at is, is oops, sorry about that. We'll, uh, there we go. 
sluggishness of the slides here. So the way this works is you can basically scan through your data sources using high-speed indexing technology to generate this rich metadata index. Again, a lot of our clients look at focusing on things like user shares, default mental servers, email backup tapes, you know, wherever your pain points are. And what that does is extracts into a searchable database is all the metadata, you know, last modified access date, user, location, all sorts of stuff. Um, you can use the, the GUI-based interface, the web-based interface, um, to be able to combine queries and filters on the metadata. Greg will show you that in a minute in the demo to make decisions, disposition decisions about the content. So if you look at, um, this is a very simplistic uh, view of data profile, if you look at an environment, we've got, say, 100 terabyte of unstructured user data. One of the key challenges I mentioned earlier with some of the tools or some of the migration and um, consolidation tools that have been used in the past has been that as you go through a, a data movement, a lot of the ownership changes to administrator. So here you can see a large chunk of it is owned by administrator, so it becomes very difficult uh, to manage. So within data profiling, we have tools that allow you to clean up that content owned by, owned by administrators. Um, there you go. So you can uh, reassign the owner based on metadata properties. So you can really analyze uh, sets of data and say, you know, if it's in this directory or this location or these types of files, the owner is going to be um, HR, basically. So you can go in there and reassign the owner from admin to a app more appropriate owner. Um, you can also reassign it based on the path, location path. So if the data is in a directory that has, um, you know, for example, marketing a as a uh, part of the path, you can extract that, that piece of the path information and assign that as owner. Or you can use, we have a tagging system, where you can use tagging based on metadata properties to tag it back to the appropriate owner. So a lot of the challenges and the headaches that, you know, that, that people have in the data center is, you know, because of previous migrations and consolidations, a lot of the data is owned by admin. You can go in and clean that stuff up using data profiling and the tools that are available. Once you do that, you'll have a cleaned owner report. So here you'll see, um, you know, they, and I'll see different buckets of data owned by, you know, a cleaned up list of, of owners. So it makes a lot more sense. And you, what you can do in that case is then you can tie those owners, you can tie those owners into Active Directory or LDAP to organize it and look at it in terms of your different departments. So here, instead of looking at it as a, you know, user-centric view, all these buckets are different uh, departments. So you can summarize it based in that way. And this could be used for chargebacks. So chargebacks is great so that you can go and look and say, hey, you know what? Um, you know, manufacturing use, is using the bulk of the server. I can charge them a little bit more than the other groups and actually tell them what, what's on there. Um, then you can go deeper into a specific uh, department and you can start doing the classification that we talked about earlier. Find abandoned data. You can defensively delete that stuff with, with the help of, of your legal and compliance group. Age data, you may want to migrate to lower cost storage or the cloud. Redundant data, you may want to purge and consolidate that content. Personal data, like iTunes libraries, pictures, photos, vacation photos, you may uh, notify the top culprits there and enforce policy, tell them to get it off the network. Risk-based data, secure that in a legal hold archive. Intellectual property, really kind of the crown jewels of your organization preserve that in an archive, and then active data, which is a small piece, monitor that stuff to determine uh, if any of these um, criteria changes in the future. So if you look at that different data set, you can reclaim and manage capacity. So you can go back in and you can, you can defensively delete content uh, with the help of the different business units that no longer has business value. You can migrate um, data to new platform, including the cloud, that, that has, um, you know, doesn't need to be as available as the other content. You can consolidate redundant data. You can remove personal files. And you can change, you know, migrate sensitive content to the archive. And you're left with really the active content, which could be a small portion of what you started out with. And you can manage that appropriately based on your data center policies. So with that, you know, there's a lot, you know, a lot to data profiling, but Greg's going to show you some examples of the technology and how it can be used to help streamline your, your data center migrations and consolidation. Thanks, Jim. 
Hi, Jim. Sorry, my name is Greg Jorgensen. I'm one of the solution architects here at Index Engines. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go by showing you the interface. Um, it's a GUI uh, web browser-based interface. Uh, you log into uh, whatever IP address you have our appliance set up in your environment. Uh, like Jim said, we tie into Active Directory, so if you have that enabled on your deployment, any of your users that you would want to have access to our appliance and search and reporting abilities, they can log in with their existing Active Directory credentials if you have it set up that way and you prefer uh, one password for everything in your environment like that. So what I'm looking at here is our reports tab. So I'm going to go and run a search on this particular demo uh, server I have here. I'm going to go and uh, look at locations. I want to look at my uh, 137 file server. This is a uh, file share server that we have on our demo environment. I'm going to look at that. I want to show all the file content on here. So I'm not doing any deduplication. Just really see what's on that file server. So I went and ran my search. So I'm going to go and populate a set of what we call summary reports. This is your first glimpse at gaining intelligence on the data uh, you know, that's contained on that particular file server that I've selected. You can run this on one file server like I did here. If you have a whole bunch of file servers, you can run it across all, you know, all of them. And if you do not select any location, it's going to go and actually uh, search all of the data that you indexed at the time you ran your indexing jobs. So remember, one thing I'm doing here, I already ran my indexing jobs. Now I'm really looking to, uh, to get those metadata-rich summary reports and start looking uh, into uh, classification of my data. So I, I ran my search on here. And one of the very uh, you know, things we like looking at is uh, age reports. That's something that's uh, very important that comes up with a lot of our clients that are doing consolidations. So if I go look at a modified time report, um, I can go and see the whole breakdown on this server by the modified metadata attribute. And one unique thing about our product, and it's very helpful, is the way you can walk through and deeper dive into data sets and learn more about that data. So by looking at this here, I see a, a big chunk of this data is, has not been modified in, let's say, greater than five years. I'd like to further look into just that data alone by deselecting all of my fields here, selecting just that greater than five-year period, and updating my query. That's going to go and that's going to repopulate my whole host of summary reports now just specifically looking at that five year or greater than data on this 137 server. So now I can go and see such you know, reports such as owner, owners of that data that's on this server that's greater than five years, hasn't been modified in greater than five years. I can see what types of files those are by file type, by extension. See here the biggest culprit as uh, you know, word files. Um, what else? I can see here that total number of results. I can see there's 439,000 and change of files that are on this server that have not been modified in uh, less than five years. I can see the size of data that that's containing. So I can go down here and I can see my total size, what the size is of that older um, abandoned or, or uh, just aged data. Um, other things I could do here, I can go see access time. That's another one of the age reports like Jim discussed earlier in the slide. So that's just you know some things from calling down data, and you could even further call here. So let's say I look at file uh, file type, and let's say I just want to specifically look at Word and PowerPoint files that are on this server. Again, still greater than five years, haven't been modified in greater than five years. It's as simple as selecting my reports, uh, updating the the calling method here, and clicking search. And now I'm diving deeper into there. So now I'm just looking at the breakdown of, of uh, document files versus PowerPoint files. Again, I can look at the owners of those files. I can then even switch over to my results tab. I can take a look at these files in a more granular view if that's something you wanted to do by uh, looking at the individual file here. I could, let's say, tag a group of these for reporting reasons. Uh, I can come up and uh, I could select a uh, downloadable CSV report. I want to go and share this CSV report with someone uh, about the results for this set. It's going to populate all of those metadata attributes for those files that were called down. Going back now to the tool, I'm just going to clear out my search. So one of the other common workflows that we see for, um, for migrations is trying to find out what percentage of the data on a particular file server is duplicate. So what I'm going to do is go back over to the report tab select my 137 server again. And this time, instead of looking at all of my data, I want to just look at the duplicate files on this file server. Maybe I could generate some reports and we don't have to migrate all these duplicate files. 
As uh, Jim stated earlier in the slides, a lot of our clients, the feedback we get is a lot of the tools they have and storage devices they have, you duplicate at a block level. But since our tool is looking at the file level, you're able to further deduplicate your, your storage devices. So I'm going to go and run a search right now. Again, changing now to just my duplicate data on this one uh, file server, my 137 server here in my, uh, in my demo environment. The system now is going to populate that set of summary reports. And now everything I'm looking at is the duplicate view here. So duplicate files by owner. So I can see here that uh, owner Bruce Wayne has the highest number of duplicate files on the 137 server. He has 48 gigs of duplicate files, uh, 71,000 files. I can go then and so say the file type report. So I can see here Word documents are the highest file type on here that is duplicated. Again, I can further cull down from any of these reports. I can go see the size of the files. Go and uh, organize here and sort by size. I can see all this is the size of duplicate content. And again, I can further cull down. So let's say I just want to look at these really large, greater than two gigabyte files. I can then update my search. And I see here that there's six files, uh, about uh, 17 gigs of data that's duplicative on this file server. Uh, and they're large files. Again, I could do things such as uh, look at the files on a granular level, on, on a file level here. I can then go and uh, create a CSV report of all the metadata attributes of those files. I could select these files and right from within our product, um, uh, after I go and select those files, I'll go back here, select those files, uh, well, you can take different actions from within the index engine's appliance. So you could defensively delete. You can copy to a different storage device. So it's as simple as selecting these files. I can click on the delete icon. I'll be presented with a window here asking me if I'd like to delete them from the index engine segment. That's that index uh, segment we created that you're searching. Or you can go and delete them from the primary source. Uh, source. So from that primary storage device, you can clean up that data before you migrate so you're not moving this duplicate large file data from this particular query. Uh, it's going to have a verification on here. So let's say I indexed this data last week, and since then this file has maybe been accessed by someone and is no longer older than five years. I could verify that before I delete. So there's different verifications here. Uh, the other thing I could do for managing this data is copy. So copying to tier storage, copying it to other locations off your tier one storage devices. I can go and use our extract feature. This is going to take a forensically sound copy of that data and place it at a destination that you choose. Here's a destination in our environment. You would uh, enter your, your user credentials that have right privileges to that destination. And then you would hit submit. And that would create a copy job and forensically copy that data. I could then go back after the copy job completes and delete that data from your source. And now you have it at that, that tiered uh, storage location, maybe if it's on a, you know, cheaper disk that's not tier one in your environment, or if it's something that's going to go to cloud, um, somewhere to manage it in that aspect. Um, also, I'm going to click back here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to run my report again on all of my data. So I'm going to go show all of my data again on this particular file server. And I click search. Again, it's going to populate all of my summary reports when I go to that summary report tab. Um, and while, I, while that's going here, uh, after, after this uh, set of reports populates, again, this is going to be looking at all, all data, not just, uh, not just duplicates and non-duplicates, it's going to be all the data on the server. I can then go and run certain filters. So let's say I want to just look by, I think, audio and video files, multimedia files was one of Jim's examples. I can go over to our, our file properties tab here, and there's different uh, categorizations here to help the user, so like a wizard-like format. And let's say I want to look at all audio and video type file types. I select that, update my search. See that there's 322 files out of the 600,000 that are audio video files. This is my size report, so I can sort them by size. I can see who uh, owns those files. So I see what owners own them files. I see a majority is owned by one user. I could then further look into what types of file that user has by selecting just that one owner. Now going over to the file extension report, let's say, and I see the number one here is WAVE files. So again, further culling down, just selecting WAVE, I'm going to update my search. And I see here there's 116 files. 
I can now go over to the results tab, take a look at what those files are named. Let's see there's some ringtones, some data that might not be business value. I could then select that and create, let's say, a CSV report of all this multimedia file for this one particular user. But then you can then use this um, CSV report to report back, help determine business value. Should that be on that server? Should it be migrated to your new equipment? Or should you take action like defensible deletion or tiered storage on that? So these are just different ways to report after you further call down into those data sets. Uh, the last thing I'd like to show you real quick is Jim mentioned that Index Engine has two different types of indexes we create. One is by using metadata, all this metadata rich information which I've been showing you so far. The other is going to be full content. So that's looking within the body of the files, the body of those mail messages, allowing you to perform full text queries. So this may be helpful. We have clients that are using our data profiling tool for managing their groups data and they may have project specific key terms that help determine and they help you know, help guide them uh, in classification. Should the files, should this data be kept? Should it be moved to tiered storage? How long should it be kept? And, and adding you know, key terms in when you have a full text index is very simple. I could type the word here, confidential. Uh, let's say me, call, uh, photo. Let's put some general terms in here. Now when I go and hit search, it's going to search these key terms. Again, I still have um, searching all of my data here, so it's going to give me a report. The number of uh, you know these are file extensions here, so these are the, the hit counts for those key terms. If I go over to the results tab, I can actually look at these files. So let's say I look at this PDF file here. I can scroll this up. It's going to give me all of the metadata for that PDF file. Uh, if I go to responsive review, if the res responsive view here. It's going to highlight all the key terms for me as well. So again, I pull that up. It's going to highlight the word confidential. That was one of my key terms on the list here. So that full context ability of working with the files could be great for certain situations where you need to get deep inside those files instead of just looking at a high-level profiling view. Thank you. I'm going to turn this back over to Jim to continue. Hey, thanks, Greg. That was very, very helpful. So to wrap it up today, Um, a few case studies of clients that are actually using the technology. Um, data profiling is pretty much a generic technology that can be used for many different um, use cases. Um, some clients are using it, for example, to support legal um, management of PST across corporate networks. So they were in the process of auditing and cleaning up about 14,000 PSTs uh, that were scattered about 500 terabytes or half a petabyte of storage. So it's kind of more of a compliance initiative. Uh, we have a business services organization that has data. This is in data domain uh, storage, so it's in backup, backup storage, um, extracting data on the legal hold, financial services. A lot of it's moving and migrating data, but it's cleaning it first. Financial services, you know, cleaning user share data according to corporate policy, um, looking at a chargeback plan against um, large servers. Uh, we do a lot of legacy tape projects. Oil and gas is migrating research data to cloud archive and so on. So you can see you know, different projects that are in the petabytes or terabytes of, of content. As I mentioned earlier that the, the Catalyst platform also supports legacy backup tapes, physical backup tapes, and we do a lot of cleanup of, and remediation of legacy tapes. So profiling these tapes, some of the projects are large, 220,000 Lotus Notes tapes or 18 petabytes of tape data um, using 35 index engines archiving 212 terabytes um, of content there. Some of them are smaller, 1900 exchange um, tapes, um, archiving 300 gigabytes of content. Most of the tape, legacy tape projects to be able to um, migrate and consolidate content from legacy tapes is due to legal compliance reasons. And the key um, differentiator here is the Catalyst product can scan those tapes without the original backup environment index them, execute policy against it, classify it, and extract or cherry pick the specific files or emails off of tape. So um, again, a little bit of a sidetrack here, talking about tapes versus uh, disk, but um, interesting nonetheless. So data profiling really supports better insight in your corporate assets. It cleans uh, streamlined storage capacity, and by cleaning up storage capacity and, and reclaiming uh, that content and separating the data with no business value from that that does have business value, it will really streamline your uh, 
you know, data center consolidation and migration projects. So I know we're getting close to wrapping up some of the you know other use cases we didn't talk about today. Um, you know, all around the same in the same vein is is H data cleanup, uh, data tiering. We do a lot of projects where they're on ramping data to a cloud or to an archive um, based on policy. Managing large files, as Greg mentioned, the multimedia files, security audits, uh, PST management, storage capacity, and chargebacks. We talked about data center migration. We talked about um, and te technology refreshes and audits to be able to understand what you have to make the proper storage and uh, planning decisions. So the nice thing about the technology is you can repurpose it to solve a lot of these different issues um, as, as you kind of cross them off your your list. Um, to that. So I have a couple white papers. Um, if you do want a copy of the slide, somebody asked for a copy of the slide deck. I'm happy to send that to you. Um, just send me a request. Um, also, if you want a copy of some of these white papers, we have a best practice paper and another white paper that talks about data profiling, um, the support of migrations and consolidations. Uh, send me an email. My email address is here. Um, and we will get back to you immediately with um, any other um, questions you may have. Um, we're pretty short on time, so I know there's a few questions. I have to cut it off there. But if you do have individual questions, again, send an email, um, and we'll get back to you. If we didn't get to your questions today, we'll get back to you um, directly. Thanks for your time. The slides will be available. The recording will be available shortly. Uh, feel free to share it with your colleagues. Appreciate your time. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>